What is going on guys? We are back playing some more Surviving with Industrial Craft 2. Now today guys, we're going to be messing around with the Radio Isotope Heat Generator. So if you don't know what this thing is, you are really missing out because this and its counterpart, the Radio Isotope Thermal Electric Generator, and boy is that a mouthful to say, those two are essentially the best forms of infinite heat and power generation when it comes to end game IC2. So this might be a little bit confusing because they don't actually generate that much heat or power compared to other things. But when I say infinite, I mean like solar panels. I mean like the bad boys that are sitting right out there. You throw them down, you forget about them, and they just keep on chugging forever. They never stop. So Essentially, you could get a ton of these set up, you could leave them there, and unlike a nuclear reactor or the liquid-cooled nuclear reactor, they don't require to be refilled with fuel or anything like that, which is why they are so great. So the way that these both work, and they essentially work in the same way, I'm going to explain in this video like we're using either one of them. They'll be pretty much interchangeable, except obviously one is generating heat, one is generating energy. Um, but what you do is you craft them, really easy to craft, which is what we're going to obviously be doing in a second here. But then you craft pellets, and these pellets are made out of plutonium. And that is why this is so balanced, because it takes a nuclear reactor before you can even set these up. So if we look up these pellets, you can see it is a pellet of RTG fuel, and it takes plutonium and dense iron plates. Now, the dense iron plates are super expensive. We're going to be setting up hopefully 12 of these pellets today, six per, which is the maximum amount that each generator can hold. And that means that we're going to be using pretty much like over a stack of dense iron plates, which it took me so long to get all this set up. It took me roughly two hours of mining and having the miner go to actually get the iron for this. But uh, the plutonium is going to come from these tiny piles of plutonium. Now, if you were using this depleted MOX for the fuel rods, you could get it a lot easier. You could get plutonium super quick from this, but we're using regular uh, uranium fuel rods, which means we can only get tiny piles. So we're going to be relying on getting four tiny piles of plutonium per thing. And I mean, that's, it's going to require, luckily we should have enough, but it's going to require a lot of these depleted uranium fuel rods. Now, luckily when I was making the iridium using the UU matter, I was AFK in this world for almost two days straight to let it generate that, just replacing the fuel rods. So I have like a stack and a half of these, which I think is just enough. I think we're going to need 81, but uh, that is what we're going to do to get the plutonium. So it does require a little bit to get going, but keep in mind, you do not need all six of these pellets to get the system to start working. So now I've been rambling a lot about this for a long time. Um, and now we got to get into crafting. So while we're doing this, one thing I want to apologize for right now is my voice. Uh, if you guys can possibly hear a difference in it, it's because I just woke up and I know Etho always complains about this, but it's, it's called like morning voice. And it's when your voice just sounds weird after you wake up. Uh, and unfortunately, there's not much that I can do about that. And I wanted to get the video up at the regular time, which is 1130 uh, EST. So I'm going to try my best to do that. But I might not be able to do that, even though I'm recording right after waking up. But uh, so this is what we're going to need for the radio isotope heat generator. So if we go in here to radio and look at the thermoelectric one, all you need is a generator instead. This one uses the heat conductor, of course, because it's got to transfer the heat to another block. So. We grab this out and we're making two today just because we're going to be throwing this into the uh, biomass biogas setup. I think I already mentioned that. Not sure if I did, though, because uh, I'm still a little bit tired, but we're going to be throwing these down there. And that's why we're using the heat again, of course. And by my calculations, it should be more effective than the thermoelectric generator. And it's also going to speed up our system by a ton. And I'll show you guys why in a little bit. And it might be a little bit surprising because right now this says it outputs one to 32 heat units per tick max. But uh that is the same thing as the current fluid heat generator we have down there, but I just checked this out in a creative world and I got it to 60 t or 64 heat units per tick. So I don't know if that's correct, but uh, it did seem a lot faster. So we'll do a comparison. We'll see which is better. And that's that. So it should be the same for the thermoelectric generator too. We should be able to get that up to 64 EU per tick, but we're not going to be messing with that today. So unfortunately, we're going to have to go off camera after I grab to grab a lot of these fuel rods i think we have some more downstairs because i don't think this is enough right here um i think we should have some down here yes we do okay so i think this should be enough we got to throw these in the thermal centrifuge though let's come over here throw them in here 
and this is going to have to heat up quite a good amount so i'm going to jump off camera in a second but one thing i want to show you guys is uh down here with what we worked on last episode so we're getting a lot of power coming in here which is great uh a lot of you guys said that you were like surprised uh one person specifically said that they were surprised with how expensive it is to set this system up just to get uh I think we're getting 300 EU per tick down here right now, so 100, 100, 50, 50. Yeah, so 100 or 300 EU per tick. Uh, that is less than we were getting before, obviously. But the reason behind this is because this setup, when you max it out, is better than the nuclear reactor. So uh, this might seem worse right now, but if I were to make like eight of these setups, eight additional ones, you would get so much more EU, um, and you can max it out a lot more. And it's, you know, eventually we will get to that, but eventually I'm going to have to move it out of this basement area or I'm going to have to expand a lot to be able to do that. So uh, just, a, just a heads up on that. But everything is going great in here, getting some more uh, fuel rods depleted, which is great because we're going to be using that for plutonium. Um, because now that I've discovered these radioisotope generators, I love them. So, uh, but one thing I wanted to show you, and this, do not get freaked out by this, but if we flip this off and then quickly flip it on... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Does that not freak you out? Does that not freak you out so much? That freaks me out so much. I accidentally did that and I flipped out. Even though I said last video, I said that I knew it happened. I wasn't going to freak out. I still freaked out. Okay, because I woke up and I was on here and I was trying to mess around with stuff and I accidentally right clicked it trying to access the hatch and it started blowing up and I almost jumped out of my chair. Okay, because I went to click on this and I was over here and I was like, oh, whoops, click that. And then I was like, oh, no, 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 I got to flip it back quick. And then I screwed it up, guys. I screwed it up bad and I freaked out. So uh, you guys missed that. I thought you'd enjoy knowing that, though. So let's go back upstairs, see if this thing's even heated up enough yet. And then I will probably jump off camera. Yeah, I'm going to jump off camera. I got to let all these things process. Then I will be back and we can jump into actually hooking this thing up, seeing how effective it actually makes the system down here. And uh, I think it's going to be pretty awesome, pretty easy to hook up to because we just got to break these blocks right here and replace these two bad boys right here. So we'll be back in a second. Okay, guys, so we are back and uh, the stuff is still processing. It's still going. Now, we should have enough to actually start making it. And the main reason I'm actually jumping back right now is because this chest right here is getting super full. And that's becoming a huge problem because it's going to stop working eventually. And uh, this is definitely not enough space, including this internal buffer right here, for another 17 of these fuel rods. Now, I don't know if they're going to go into the internal buffer of this. I'm actually curious. Does this... I don't even know if that has an internal buffer. So, uh, yeah, we do need to be a little cautious to make sure that this doesn't stop running while I'm just, like, away. I was actually playing Hearthstone, um, but I played one game of Control Warrior versus Control Warrior, so it took, like, 50 minutes. So... Uh, some of you might not get that, but if you have ever played Hearthstone, you probably do. Um, but we get a lot of uranium and iron dust, which is great, because after I spent all that time mining iron, um, and mainly letting the miner get it, but uh, this is a lot of iron coming back, which is great. It's because uh, you're getting a little bit of return for putting in the iron plate in here. So it's pretty much giving it back to you. You just have to process it again. But what we're going to do is grab all this tiny plutonium out of here and... Oh, there was an internal buffer. Okay, look at that. It's piling in here. Okay, so is that all of it? It looks like it is. So what we can come and do right now, and hopefully you can't hear that. Someone's mowing outside. I'm going to be really mad if you can hear that. But uh, so we're going to take all of this and we're going to get it in there. And I don't even know if there's a more effective way of putting it in here. But we're going to get all this plutonium in there, get it going, and... There we go. Okay, so we got 31 right now. We can get a little bit more in the future if we need it, but we're going to grab all this out, and we're trying to make 12 of these. So uh, we're going to get these going. I feel like you can definitely hear that outside, so I'm a little bit annoyed right now. Um, yeah. You know what? I'm probably going to make these and then hop off so that you guys don't have to listen to that. So Okay, so we can almost finish crafting them. We've got all of these pellets of RG fuel. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hop off camera again, even though I've been back for like no time at all. I'm going to let this person that's across the street finish mowing. And I'm going to finish crafting these and then we can jump back and actually see this in action. Okay, guys. So we're back again. We're finally ready to finish things up. But before we actually jump into that, 
I have to rant for a second, and I know I typically don't do this, and I try and just get through all the stuff I need to to be helpful for you guys so that I don't waste your time watching these videos if you want to find out how things work, but I just waited 40 minutes for my neighbors not to get their lawn mowed, it had already been mowed before I started recording, to get the grass clippings blown off their driveway, and on top of that, it wasn't just the driveway, it was blown off their lawn, apparently having grass clippings on your grass is a problem now so let everyone know okay because i just wasted 40 minutes waiting for them to do that so uh i'm a little mad right now like genuinely actually kind of annoyed but uh we're gonna keep going we're gonna finish things up here before you know another neighbor decides that they need to have grass clippings blown off of grass but uh we got the 12 pellets of rtg fuel here ready to go we got the radioisotope heat generator now we can finally finish things up so it is time to go downstairs and uh, I'm gonna come over here, like I said, and we gotta break these two blocks. So these, like I said, emit 32 heat units per tick and they use a lot of biogas. So uh, I believe it's like 10 millibuckets per second to emit this. Uh, it's a little weird when you're converting between tick and seconds. Things are listed in seconds, things are listed in ticks. So um, I'm pretty sure the wiki lists this as 10 millibuckets per second and that looks to be quite accurate, but um, we are just gonna, we're gonna get rid of these. I didn't really do any hard calculations for this, but rough calculations show that this should, uh, significantly increase our EU per tick. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrench these puppies and come down here and I actually want to fill in this right here. It should make it a little bit easier to place them down if this is, this is slightly filled in. Okay. So we should be good to go here and this one's actually going to be, Never mind. We do need to get back here because this is awkward to place them down when we're down here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna get these out and we're gonna place it down. So then we're gonna have to we're gonna have to flip it. So let me get down here and flip it. So that should be facing the correct direction. And we can build up. And then we'll do the same thing with this one. And we'll flip it. So these should both be facing the correct direction. And you can see it says currently transmitting zero out of zero, which means it's transmitting zero heat and has a maximum ability to transfer zero heat. So if we were to throw one of these in there, it is at two. If we throw another one in there, it is at four. If we throw another, it is at eight. So if you know what this means, it is essentially going up by exponents of two, or by it's two raised to the X number of pellets, and the max is six. So now we have 16, now we have 32. And if we look over here and we go to the radio isotope heat generator, this says it's a max of 32, but I do not believe that is correct. It lists this as 64, and two raised to the six is that. So Technically, it should be correct that it can output 64 heat units per tick. So, uh, pretty interesting there. I assume that means that this one can output uh, 36 EU per tick. And I suspect it's because these are supposed to start at 1 with the tooltip. Um, and an update might have changed it to start at 2. So, initially, the first one would make it go from 1 to 2. And then it would go to 32. And instead, it now starts at 2 and goes to 64. I suspect that's probably what it is, but can't be positive. And now we can throw these in the bottom one. Same thing will happen. And these have no durability on them. They never go away. Like I said, it is infinite. So what we can do now is we can fill it in right here, get back up here. You can see they got some nice light on them. And this is going a lot faster. See, uh, it should be going twice as fast, which means that this system over here is actually gonna start running more because we're gonna be using up a lot more biomass. So what this also means is these should be filling up a lot so you can see that uh, this one actually is starting to back up too because this is full right over here so we actually have a completely full MFSU now but these should be getting a lot of biogas in them compared to what they would have gotten before just because we are going to have the uh, semi or not going to have the fluid heat generator over here consuming any of that power uh, possible power I should say because uh, yeah, we now have infinite heat coming out. Uh, another thing that I actually want to look at really quick is to see how this system will function when there's a power backup. So this is going to fill up and I'm curious if it'll stop running. Like if I need to be worried about it. So let's see. Okay, so these, eventually this is going to stop running and there's going to be a backup. Does it keep generating steam is the question. See, it's consuming it. It's outputting the heat. Uh, oh, 
Is this going to drain all of the water? Okay. So this is going to fill up. It's no longer going to be getting water back. The water is all going to get drained as far as I'm aware. Because this thing is... They're, they're not going to be doing anything. Right? So this... We'll see when this fills up. But uh, I know this really doesn't pertain to this episode. But I'm genuinely curious. Because I don't want to AFK on here. And have this system melt down. Because there's... Um, there's nowhere for it to go. Okay. So this is going to be... Consuming this water to make the steam, and then when this runs out, no, does it does it keep condensing? I can't tell if this is uh, this might actually just keep producing steam that goes into here that gets condensed. I think that actually might be what happens, and we just don't get power for it. Okay, I'm fine with that. Um, but what I'm probably going to do is just end up bringing down my suit and charging it up in here because we're not going to be needing this hazmat suit anymore now that we're done with all this radioactive stuff. Pretty excited about this system. So hopefully you guys found the video informative or useful. If you did find it either of those things or entertaining, feel free to give it a like as it does help me out a lot. And thanks for dealing with my ranting, guys. I do apologize. I did actually get a little bit mad there because I just wanted to record. I wanted to get the video out at the usual time. And unfortunately, because grass clippings are too much of a problem for people to deal with, they needed to waste uh, gasoline and my time by blowing those off their lawn but um you know that's besides the point so uh yeah i'm starting to rant again actually that's that's kind of bad but um i will talk to you guys later so thanks for watching